We are called to be world changers. Every life impacts another and can change the course of history. Join Lisa Harper, Natalie Grant, Nona Jones, Jamie Ivey, and Melinda Doolittle as we talk about becoming women of faith who shift culture. I think sometimes we do get the impression that as a woman, we don't have, have what it takes to really shape the way that society functions. But um, there's a very familiar story in the Bible that I wanted to start with. And it's going to seem probably kind of strange to start here as we talk about shaping culture. But it's a familiar story in the book of John, uh, chapter four. And it's about uh, the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. So it says, you know, Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that he was baptizing and making more disciples than John, though Jesus himself didn't baptize them, his disciples did. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. Verse four says he had to go through Samaria on the way. That to me is such an interesting verse because in fact, he didn't have to go right, right. <laughs> through Samaria. Um, it was actually not, um, it was not uh, expected right. that he would go through Samaria because of the culture of the time. Right. And yet there was a woman in Samaria that he had to meet at the well. And we know the story about how he comes upon her and all that. But what was interesting to me is this woman, she goes to the well in the middle of the day, mm-hmm. When, of course, the other women would go in the morning when it was nice and cool out. She goes in the middle of the day because she doesn't want to be seen. And Jesus meets her at the well and begins to speak prophetically to this woman. And, of course, she's first of all like, why the heck is this guy even talking to me? Like, do you not know who I am? And Jesus begins to speak to her in such a mighty, powerful way that it changes the way that she even sees herself. And to me, I think what makes the word of God so powerful for women is that if we let it, it will meet us right where we are and it will change the way that we see ourselves. Mm -hmm. For me, this became so real because um, I've mentioned in several of these uh, shows that I didn't grow up in a Christian home. Um, As a matter of fact, the home that I grew up in, there was a lot of dysfunction and abuse. And Mm -hmm. my mother told me that I was stupid, that I was fat. And I I grew up with this understanding that I was less than, essentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when I went to church for the very first time in the sixth grade, the pastor, he was preaching a sermon. And he said, God is a father to the fatherless, Mm -hmm. which I had lost my father at a young age. And and that sermon, it, it activated something in me. And I immediately was like, Okay, well, then who is this God? And at 11 years old, I started on my own faith walk Mm -hmm. to discover who God is. And it was through that journey that I found out, and we've been talking about these verses, but they are so real to me, Mm -hmm. that uh, God knew me before Mm -hmm. I was formed in my mother's Mm -hmm. womb. So even though my mother said to me that she didn't want me, that I was a mistake, I was clearly designed intentionally on purpose. Mm -hmm. And that changed the way that I saw myself. And I I also discovered that I was fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, this is a child who was told that I had a learning disability. I was told that I was a bad child because I was Mm -hmm. acting out at school because of what was happening to me at home. Suddenly, how I saw myself changed because I had an encounter with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I wanted to start our conversation here is because we as women cannot shape society until we first allow the word of God Mm -hmm. to shape how we see ourselves. Right. And many times I think what we do is we look over the fence at somebody else and we see, oh my gosh, she has 300,000 followers and oh, she's speaking at these large conferences. That could never be me. And Jesus is saying, what makes you think that you are somehow less than? Right. What makes you think that I created you on accident? That somehow you, you know, you slipped through the cracks, (laughs) right? And you you showed up on the scene, but you have no purpose and you have no calling. Um, I do believe that as women, if we allow the word of God Mm -hmm. to open our eyes to the fact that we are here on purpose, that we may not change the world, but we will change the part of the world that God has called us to. And that could be our home. Mm -hmm. That could be a cubicle at an office. Yep, yep. Right. Or it could be a yeah. major platform, yeah. but wherever God has called us to. Oh my gosh, I love that story so much because not only did Jesus enter into her world and not only did Jesus offer her living water and not only did Jesus know about her five husbands mm-hmm. that she had, he knew all these things. And still, But at the very end of that chapter, it says, and she went into town and many believed yes. because of this woman's because testimony. Right, because of her testimony. And so she was a changer right where she was because God changed her life 
She went back and said, you're not going to believe I've met the one who calls himself the Messiah. And many believed because she was a missionary. She had a lot of people call her first evangelist. Yeah. I love, I've... Scripture, the more you study scripture, the better it the gets. The layers. It's yeah, just it's oh, better gosh. and better and better. It's Living like word. holding a diamond up to the light. But not too long ago, because we all oftentimes she's castigated yeah. as a woman with a sleazy reputation. Yeah. And that's how culture has painted her. You study first century culture, it's mm-hmm. very unlikely that she had a tawdry reputation mm-hmm. because they would not have married her. Mm-hmm. Men would have been with her, yes. but they wouldn't have given her a certificate of marriage. Yep. So modern theological, mostly consensus, is that she probably struggled with infertility and was very mm-hmm. beautiful. Because otherwise, men would have used her for sex, but they wouldn't have given her a certificate of yep. marriage, certainly not five times right. over. Mm-hmm. And so you go, goodness gracious, even that woman has been marginalized unfairly. Yes. Yes. Wow. yes. Because she yeah. probably wasn't a woman of ill repute, mm-hmm. she probably couldn't bear children. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you go, goodness gracious, how quick we are to pile on wow. yep. instead of to go, let's back up, even with the people in our life to go, how does God see them? Mm-hmm. Um, because we keep saying we need to start there. Yeah. But I think in order for us to actually shape, reshape culture, we also have to see each other as a Mago day. That's right. For me to even want to yeah. change culture is to go, you bear God's image. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't know him as your savior yet, how can I better respect and love well these okay. image bearers mm-hmm. that I get to be around, that okay. their cubicles next to mine yeah. or their kids play with mine? Or mm-hmm. I, I think that's part of shaping culture is to actually respect and love well Mm -hmm. the culture that he's sovereignly woven us into. At least that's what I feel like he's been kind of hammering home to me lately is do you want to lead and shape culture because you love people and you love me or just because you want to lead? I um, work with a program that goes into prisons and Mm -hmm. um, does concerts in these prisons, like a two hour concert and they call it just the hope tour, Mm -hmm. just to bring hope to people. And I, when I would go into Mm -hmm. these prisons, I would always, my prayer would be, you know, Lord, you know, show them Jesus, show them Jesus through me. And that was always my prayer. And then I took a trip to Israel with Christy McClelland and um, we were standing outside and just talking about who God is and, and kind of just in the land, you know, which is so beautiful. Didn't it change the way you see scripture? It changed (laughs) everything for me. And, but this statement is the thing that got me. Mm. Um, The man talking said, you know, a lot of times when we go into these situations, we are like, let me take Jesus into these situations. Mm -hmm. He's like, but if we really look at scripture, Jesus says, when I was hungry, you fed me. Mm-hmm. When I was in prison, you visited right. me. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. he was like, this, yeah. so actually you're yeah. going to encounter uh, Jesus. That's, that's so great. Right. And good. that moment, like it, like a, a switch just flipped mm-hmm. in yeah. me in how I see other people yeah. and how I see mm-hmm. how I encounter other people. Right. And it gave me a way to just see their strength yeah. mm-hmm. and see yeah. what they mm-hmm. get to bring to the table. Mm-hmm. And the next prison I walked into, I was like, You took oh, away more hope than you brought, didn't thank, you? Thank yeah. you for showing yeah. me Jesus yeah. Yeah. in this moment. Yeah. Uh, my, my booking agent goes, into, goes to death row every week and wow. visits with the inmates. And he, I asked mm-hmm. him, I was like, just why, why do you do that? And he was like, well, I was looking for Jesus. Mm. Mm. And he said, that's where Mm. he was. And I think sometimes Mm. we go in kind of in our own strength thinking like, okay, but I'm going to use this term. I'm showing them Jesus. Yeah. 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 I'm doing this. Yeah. But the, the strength really is to be able to see Jesus and to be able to encounter him in that moment. And that's so, and I think too, when you, even just as you say that you think about just what we're talking today about being a, a world changer and it's the motivation of, you know, if you're actually setting out to be a world changer, <laughs> typically, <laughs> oh, I'm going to be a world changer. <laughs> like, like what? Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I'm actually even right now thinking how many times do I say that I've got three daughters 
How many times do I say that? Like, oh, you're going to be a world changer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I say it all the time. Like, what does that mean yeah. Yeah, to them, though? Mean? Like, what does that yeah. mean? Does that mean, like, I'm telling you that you're going to be famous mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. that you're going to be a superstar? Or because my youngest, I'm pretty sure that's what she thinks it means. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I am. <laughs> um, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Being a world changer, if you look at these, the greats in the Bible, yeah. they weren't setting out. Mm -mm, to yeah. be a world changer. No, no, no. They were setting out to just whatever God had to placed. To give their life away. Yes. Yeah. Whatever yeah. God had placed, yeah. they were like, I'm just going to give that away. Yes. And that's how you change the world yeah. is not the ones that are just setting out to be a world changer, but in fact, they're changing the world because they're just living out whatever it is that God has placed yeah. in yeah. their hand. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, and I think I think that's, that's why to me, the grace of God is so important yes. because yeah. you cannot impact mm -mm. the world without mm -hmm. the grace of God. Right. Yes. And you're right. Like many times people will, will accept an assignment because we see somebody else doing it. Right. Yeah. You know, I cannot tell you how many friends and y'all watching this. So y'all don't, don't be upset with me, but they've launched a podcast. They, they have a new talk show. They, they're writing books or doing all these things just because somebody else did it. Yeah. Yes. And they're exhausted and they're overwhelmed yes. and they're frustrated. I'm like, sis, that is not yeah. your calling. That's not right. your assignment. You're right. not graced for right. it. You're taking it on oh, because you just good. want what somebody else has. That's right. And I think where, where we as women can shine is when we're okay with whatever God calls yes. us to, because right. he will always give us the grace to carry out yeah. the will that he's right. placed yeah. on our life. But he's not going to give us grace to just mm -hmm. do whatever we want to do. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think right now, I always tell my kids, you literally can do anything. Yes. Uh -huh. I mean, uh -huh. the way our world is, you can travel anywhere, get on the internet, you can Google anything, you can yeah. do anything. It is at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. But I think there are really going to be few people that we see and we go in their lifetime, yeah. we see this massive effect mm -hmm. that they had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think for most of us, it is generation after generation right. after right. generation right. after right. generation. Yeah. And so you think of like, if I want to be a world changer, well, what I think about in my head is like, okay, I have these four people, right. my kids, yes. right. that I have the most influence over right now. And then let's say God wills, three of them out of the four to get married or whatever. And then that goes on and that right. goes on. And you look and you just think, man, it goes back to being faithful right where you are with right. what yes. God has given right. you to do and not taking your eyes and looking around and thinking someone else because he has put people mm -hmm. in your life that you are going to change. Mm -hmm. And literally look at the people in your life that influenced you and then look at the influence that you have. Right. And it's just a rip. Yeah. Yes. It's and so incredible. I think sometimes we make it real big, you know, right. like I need to be <laughs> yeah. in front of millions right. when really a world changer is changing their Changes world. That They're part corner. of the world. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yes. The world around them. Long, long, long time ago when I was first starting to, to teach, and by the way, I found out recently that proclamation is the least effective way to affect change. Mm. That what you say yeah. doesn't matter. Mm. Yeah. What you model. Come on. Wow. That's right. Yep. So yes. if what you model does not is not yeah. congruent with what you yeah. say on a stage, mind a microphone, teaching, preaching, it, it doesn't, doesn't nope. it almost does worse. But anyway, this this man who I really trusted was a mentor and we were talking about vocational ministry. We're all in ministry. Mm -hmm. Um but I was starting to doing doing some teaching and writing. And he said, Lisa, this is what I think of when it comes to your gifts and, and how God will use you. He said, your, your gifts are like a sail on a sailboat. Mm -hmm. And he said, so you want to trim your sails so that whenever the wind blows, you go wherever God designed you to go. And it might be to a deserted beach with two or three people, mm -hmm. or it might be to a crowded beach with two or 3,000. Mm -hmm. He said, but your responsibility is to trim your sails. He said, but here's the deal. You can't ever plug in a fan because the Holy Spirit is the wind. Wow. wow. Oh, and great. I have thought about that for 30 years since good. he told me that. There will so be good. times I'm doing something and I'll think, mm. yep. are you plugging in a fan? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Or are you yep. trimming wow. your sails? Yep. And the the small beach and th the number of people on the beach doesn't matter. You look mm. at Andrew. He introduced Peter to Jesus. Yeah. Who was more important, Jesus or Peter? Well, Peter just had more likes. Yeah. <laughs> he had a, probably True. a more expert yeah. personality, yeah. but Andrew's the one who said, wow. I've met the Christ. He is the Christ, Pete, wow. come and see. And so I think if we would run in our lane yep, with right. joy and passion, Beekner says that our calling is where our great joy and the world's great hunger yeah. intersect. So you run where God's gifted you. He hadn't called you to be a computer programmer. Yeah. 
He gave you a voice mm-hmm. to sing. He gave you everything about your ribs. I just love when you tell that story. It's like he <laughs> fashioned you to yeah, sing. It's yes. that Eric Little. When I do this, I feel God's yeah, pleasure. Yeah. If we would all do what we know he's yes. called us to do and not worry about the breadth, yeah. culture will yeah. be changed. Yep. You know yeah, what? You just good. reminded me of, um, I, think it's, I think it's in Matthew. You would know this because you know you, you had the Bible totally memorized. Oh, but, yeah. Um, Every, all of it. <laughs> where, Especially Leviticus. <laughs> where, <laughs> <laughs> when, oh God! When um, when Jesus showed up on the scene, and you know John the Baptist had his disciples, yeah. and, and Jesus shows up on the scene, and and he says, you know, there he is. There's the one I've been, mm-hmm. you know, preaching yeah. about. And his disciples leave him and go follow Jesus. Uh-huh. And I I always think about that because yeah. I'm like, would I have had the character? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. To see my folks leave, Absolutely. even if that was the whole point. The Messiah, right. yeah. To be like, okay, yeah, they left with them leaving me, and I think. That to me is the model. And that's the heart check, which is, okay, am I building this kingdom unto myself Mm. or am I building it unto Jesus for real? So much so that if everybody abandons me, (laughs) I'll be okay because I've done my job. And and I think that's a heart check. It's like, okay, am I going to be okay if everybody goes somewhere else? This is a goofy for me to use an athletic analogy, but I think sometimes Christians play tennis instead of basketball. Mm-hmm. And you know how when you're playing tennis, it's just two yeah. people together if you're yeah. playing singles and, and so you good. have to win. Basketball, everybody, yeah. you, you might be point guard, you might yeah. throw. And we, we forget that when the water rises, all the ships yep. rise. So good. Yeah. You know, remember when the yeah. disciples said to Jesus, but, but they're not doing it the way we're exactly. doing it. And he said, <laughs> but they're doing it in my name. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so sometimes we forget if I, I always get questions about, because I speak with you sometimes, mm-hmm. known as amazing, speak with other people who are really, really gifted, yes. much more gifted than me. And so I'll get people say, is it hard for you to follow so-and-so? And I'm always okay. like, well, no, mm-hmm. because if I just get on base, yeah. they'll bat me around and yeah. I still get the World Series ring and the $10,000 bonus. That's like, this right. is for yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So right. whatever part on the team I get to play, I'm stinking excited to be an elbow in the body of Christ. That's same and yeah. to be your part. Like, you know mm-hmm. what I would really be bad at? Being Lisa. Oh, Lord. Yeah. You know, and I think so many times we think, man, I would really be important and valuable if I did that. that thing. Yes. But Paul talks about that. We talk about like how the body needs all parts. Oh, yes. And doesn't everyone want to be the head or Brett. the fingers? Yeah. But somebody has to be the knee, you somebody know? Somebody has to be the knee. Yes. And without That's the right. knee, That's we right. can't function the heel as or the well. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. so it's just this idea of, man, I want to be so, like we've said, so connected to his word that I trust that I am the pinky toe. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be the best pinky toe right. that has ever lived. Yes. And right. I'm going to be thankful for that toe next to me. Because the body can't balance. You can't. Right. Right. That's right. That's right. It needs it. And yeah. I need it to run your race. Yes. Right. I mean, like, yeah. Run your race. Right. Stop trying to jump into somebody right. else's lane because that's not the lane he's actually carved out for you. I'm actually just looking in Hebrews where it says, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Mm -hmm. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. We do this by keeping our eyes straight ahead, forward on him. That means that you're not looking over here to see what that person is doing and you're not looking. It doesn't mean that you don't want advice that, but sometimes do you ever feel like people are actually asking you for an actual blueprint? Yeah. How to do, what would you just, give me, just give me a blueprint of how to do what you're doing. Well, you don't need to do what I'm doing because I'm doing what I'm doing and I'm actually doing what God's made me to do. You need to do what he's made you to do and not worry to the right or to the left. I've told this story before, but just recently, my daughter Bella has discovered that she's a runner. I don't know who she got it from because she didn't get that from me. (laughs) Um, But she loves cross country, which is a whole other conversation. Um, She for sure did not get that from me, Um, (laughs) but she loves it. And there was this girl on the team and cross country is actually a team sport. Uh So when her time does well and another person on her team's time Mm -hmm. does well, all of that time adds together to get the championship. There was actually no individual champion from the team, but somebody on her team kept constantly looking to see where my Bella was because she was competitive with where she was in a race, forgetting, well, wait a second, we're on the same team, we're running to get the best mm-hmm. time right. we can mm-hmm. together. Yeah, yeah. But instead, she kept looking. And this one day in particular, we were watching them come up there where they run their race. We watched them come up this hill. 
And this girl was actually, I had seen them probably halfway through the race and this gal was like literally solidly in front of my Bella, mm. solidly. Like I was like, you know what? Good for her. She's gonna yeah. finish today. And even though the team's gonna do well, yeah. she's gonna feel accomplished right. because she got her best time and she got a better time than Bella. Good for her. They come around that last turn and I kept seeing her going like this, yeah. right. going Slowed like this down. to see where my Bella mm -hmm. was. Wow. The problem is when she finally got to right at the end, She'd spent all that time mm, looking yeah. back, looking back, looking back. Mm -hmm. When she got right to the end, she didn't look back. And guess what happened? Yeah. Bella never looked back. Bella, Bella passed her, baby. Bella, <laughs> right in that last 10 <laughs> seconds, Bella was like, yeah. and yeah. all of a sudden she saw her pass her to the side and you just saw this whole, uh -huh. like number one, there's so many things. This isn't a competition. Mm -mm. You're all on the mm -mm. same team. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. one, her doing well is well for all of you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also, you didn't do your best. Because she was distracted. You kept going, you kept right. going like this the whole right. time. Yep. Wow. So there, you're missing out on both joys. Mm. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yep. But when you set your eyes on Jesus, mm. you set right. it forward on your king yes. and run the race that he's carved out for you in the lane he's carved out. Yeah. I have learned so much peace is by releasing the need for credit. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And I think that's, mm -hmm. that's where we end up feeling so insecure mm -hmm. because we need credit. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if you think about it, the word insecure essentially means that there's that something is secure to something that is unstable. And that means that our identity therefore is secured to something mm -hmm. that is unstable. So when I start to feel insecure, I ask myself, where am I, where am I asking for credit? Mm -hmm. Because there is yeah. something in my life wow. that I'm trying to derive value from that is not of God. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's where I have grown to the point where I'm like, you know what? Yeah. If yeah. I'm the one carrying the ball, great. If I'm the one in the stands drinking the, the Gatorade, great. All right. yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. as long as we're we're moving the ball down the field. Right. Mm. I've okay. always actually tried to sing as high as Natalie does. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm like, Lord, make me a soprano. No. He's like, I give you tenor. <laughs> so Solid I, tenor. Yeah. I understand that. And what's so beautiful about it is that if we sang the same mm. note, you just have this unison sound oh, going right. on. Right. But right. the harmony the that harmony. we can make together is so beautiful. Yes. Yes. So good. Yes. And I, good. I feel like sometimes we are always looking at somebody else and what yeah. they have yeah. that we don't, right. yes. as opposed to seeing what we've been gifted with yes. and seeing how it adds to the sound, right. as opposed to mm. yeah. stress. More of a right. symphony than one note. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. that's, yeah. that's why I, I had wanted to start our conversation um, just anchoring on the fact that Jesus, he said that he had to go through Samaria, yeah. which we know he did not have to do. But he did it because he knew that there was a woman there who needed to know she was valued, mm -hmm. that she needed to know that she mattered. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's such an important reminder. Mm -hmm. It's like, listen, whatever so-called deficiencies you think you may have, you, you look at other people and you're like, I wish I could do that and I wish I could do that. You have been made exactly the way that God wanted you to be in order to carry out the assignment that God has over your life. And so that's, that's what I'm hoping people take from this conversation. Yeah. Mm. So mm. I guess we should we should pray. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's let's just pray because I think there are some women watching this mm. who need to have that assurance. Father, yes. Lord, we first of all just acknowledge you as sovereign. Mm -hmm. God, you fashioned the universe to nothing, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but you have created within every single one of us a unique purpose. Mm. Um, and I just pray, God, first of all, that you would help us to clear out the noise, the noise in our head and our mm. heart that says uh, we're not good enough because we're not like mm. someone else. Um, Lord, if you wanted us to be that someone else, you would have made us that someone else, and yet you did not. And so my prayer, Father, is for everyone who is watching this, God, help to, help to restore a sense of identity mm. to all of us so that we will realize we are neither what happened to us, nor are we what we have done. We are not what someone has spoken over us, and we are not even what we think we lack. God, we are fully and, and totally perfect in your eyes because you created every cell in our body, you created every fiber, every fiber of muscle in our body, God. You even decided that we had a purpose before we realized that we had a purpose. And so I pray, God, for those who have been told that they are not good enough, Lord, that you will convince them through your word what is true, that they have 
purpose, they have worth, they have value, God. I pray, Lord, that you will help to quiet those voices in their head that says that maybe somebody else has more intention than they do, God. You do not make mistakes, you do not make extras. And so I pray that you will restore within all of us a sense of identity. God, you have called us to be world changers by changing that part of the world that you have placed us in. And we will serve you, God, with fidelity. We will serve you with passion. We will serve you with everything we have because we want to lift your name. And we want all men to be drawn unto you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.